Testament reading for the 21st Sunday after Pentecost is from Ecclesiastes, the fifth chapter. (coughs) He who loves money will not be satisfied with money, nor he who loves wealth with his income. This also is vanity. When goods increase, they increase who eat them. And what advantage has their owner but to see them with his eyes? Sweet is the sleep of a laborer, whether he eats little or much. But the full stomach of the rich will not let him sleep. There is a grievous evil that I have seen under the sun. Riches were kept by their owner to his hurt, and those riches were lost in a bad venture. He is father of a son, but he has nothing in his hand. As he came from his mother's womb, he shall go again, naked as he came, and shall take nothing for his toil that he may carry away in his hand. This also is a grievous evil. Just as he came, so shall he go. And what gain is there to him who toils for the wind? Moreover, all his days he eats in darkness, in much vexation and sickness and anger. Behold, what I have seen to be good and fitting is to eat and drink and find enjoyment in all the toil with which one toils under the sun the few days of his life that God has given him, for this is his lot. Everyone also to whom God has given wealth and possessions and power to enjoy them and to accept his lot and rejoice in his toil, this is the gift of God. For he will not much remember the days of his life because God keeps him occupied with joy in his hearts. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. He will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. The epistle is from Hebrews, the fourth chapter. Therefore, while the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us fear, lest any of you should seem to have failed to reach it. For good news came to us just as to them. But the message they heard did not benefit them, because they were not united by faith with those who listened. For we who have believed enter that rest, as he has said, As I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest, although his works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he has somewhere spoken of the seventh day in this way. And God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again in this passage he said, They shall not enter my rest. Since therefore it remains for some to enter it, And those who formerly received the good news failed to enter because of disobedience. Again, he appoints a certain day, today, saying through David so long afterward, in the words already quoted, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken of another day later on. So then there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For whoever has entered God's rest has also rested from his works as God did from his. Let us therefore strive to enter that rest, so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And no creature is hidden from his sight. But all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom he must give account. Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How difficult it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were amazed at his words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how difficult it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. And they were exceedingly astonished and said to him, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, With man it is impossible, but not with God. For all things are possible with God. Peter began to say to him, See, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I say to you, there is no one who has left house, or brothers or sisters, or mother or father, or children or lands, for my sake and for the gospel, who will not receive a hundredfold now in this time, houses and brothers, and sisters and mothers, and children and lands, with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first, will be last, and the last first. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how difficult it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were amazed at his words, but Jesus said to them again, children, how difficult it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. And they were exceedingly astonished and said to him, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, With man it is impossible, but not with God. For all things are possible with God. The first few words of our Old Testament reading this morning do indeed speak about money, but also the dissatisfaction that one can have with money. The writer to the Ecclesiastes writes, He who loves money will not be satisfied with money, nor he who loves wealth with his income. This also is vanity. When goods increase, they increase who eat them. And what advantage has their owner but to see them with his eyes? Sweet is the sleep of a laborer, whether he eats little or much. But the full stomach of the rich will not. Let him sleep. Of course, we could apply these words to other things in addition to money as well. Whether it be possessions in general, even other people. Jesus himself says, if anyone loves father or mother or son or daughter or spouse more than me, that one is not worthy of me. In essence, what the writer to the Ecclesiastes is writing about, and also what Jesus is speaking about when he says how difficult it is to enter the kingdom of God, generally speaking, not only for the rich, but also for the poor, is that love of possessions. The love of other things other than God. We heard the text last week from which this one continues where a rich man came to Jesus asking what he must do to inherit eternal life. And there in that text we heard the sad news that the man loved 
his wealth and his possessions more than even the treasured possession of eternal life. You see, he was not willing to give up all that he had as God's gift for the one thing needful for eternal life. And that is Christ. What Jesus calls his disciples to do, then as well as now, is to separate from the love of the world and to love him above everything else. We heard those words just recently too. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added to you. But how often it is that we seek what we see in this life. We seek the treasured possessions of this earth. Rather than acknowledging and recognizing the great gifts that God has given us in the heavens for all eternity. So St. Paul says, having been raised with Christ, set your mind on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God the Father, and not on things of the earth. But how difficult it is to do that, because we are flesh and blood creatures. We desire things. We desire to serve others that they might even serve us. And yet God's way is far different from the ways of the world. How difficult it is to enter the kingdom of God. Because we have nothing of which to enter ourselves. You see, God must do it all. And he does. And yet in this life we know quite a bit differently. Whether it be work, whether it be school. If you want something done, you have to do it yourself. No one is going to study for that test for you. No one is going to milk that cow for you when it's your responsibility to do that. We understand that in our day. And yet, here God comes with his word, speaking words of life and saying, hold on to these alone. Not what you do, but look to what Christ did for you. Of man, it is Difficult, it is in fact impossible to enter the kingdom of God. Just as we cannot be born ourselves or choose to be born of our mother, so it is that we cannot choose to be born of God either. God Himself must create the new heart within us, God Himself must rebirth us through water and word, which He so graciously wonderfully does. He says, this gift, this life is for you. And Jesus himself says, the words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. Jesus, the one who raised Lazarus from the tomb after he had been dead for four days in the grave. Jesus who raised the son the widow who was dead. Jesus who raised Jairus' daughter as well. That's the word. Jesus himself who is the resurrection and the life does have the authority to give life simply by means of his word. By means of his holy word, you stand forgiven before God through faith in him who speaks. And yet these are not just any words. These are God's words. Which call for faith of you to believe. 
But amazingly and astoundingly, God himself gives you that faith to believe his words through that very word that he speaks. And through that very word that he speaks, he keeps you in that word, believing that word, so that you can be sure and certain of entering the kingdom of God. See, now your desires and your thoughts, because you are of Christ, have changed from what they once were. And they are indeed changing. Because the Christian daily remembers their baptism, what God has done for them, what God has done for you. And through, by means of his word, he gives you new life and he recreates in you new life every single day. Your life as a Christian is not stagnant. It continues to change, not because God's word keeps changing, because it doesn't, but because God, by means of his word, keeps changing you. Even if you see everything else falling apart, even if you see yourself doing the same thing over and over and over again, that's what makes entering the kingdom of God difficult and impossible if it relies on you. But the good news is, it doesn't. Your salvation does not rely on you. Your eternal life does not depend on you. Entering the kingdom of God does not in any way depend on you. Jesus himself said, with man it is impossible to enter the kingdom of God. Of God. That's just simply the truth. And those who reject this word or deny this word are in effect rejecting God and His Son Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ is not only man, Jesus Christ is also the incarnate Word. God. But Jesus does not only say with man entering the kingdom of God is impossible, he also says that all things are possible with God. But context is crucial here. Because Jesus is not talking about climbing the highest mountain. He's not talking about making hundreds of thousands of dollars for doing very little. Jesus is speaking specifically here about nothing else but entering the kingdom of God, eternal life. And what precious good news this is, because he's already done it all. I know of one other place in the Gospels where similar words are used and often misused by many. Speaking about how things are impossible with man but not with God. The context in which we find ourselves today, Jesus is speaking specifically about salvation. But on that other occasion, where the angel says, with God, nothing will be impossible, the context is not so much about salvation, but about what is impossible with man, that a virgin would conceive. The only other occasion in the Gospels that I'm aware of where these words are spoken, that all things are possible with God, or that with God nothing will be impossible, is when the angel Gabriel visits Mary and announces to her that she will bear the Christ child, a virgin who knows not a man. And after the news, Mary said to the angel, How can this be since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. The angel also says, 
Indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is now the sixth month for who, her who was called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. You see, what is impossible in our day on this earth by man is not impossible with God. Just think back to the Old Testament accounts that we hear of and that we know of from our Bible readings, from Sunday school. With a word, God said, let there be light. And there was light. God told Moses to raise his staff, and the Red Sea parted, so that the people of Israel walked as on dry land through the sea to their salvation. God told Noah that he would send a flood and to build an ark. And Noah heeded the Lord and built the ark and saved him as well as all the animals they took with him on the ark to preserve life when the waters had receded. God saved his people Israel time and time and time again even by the demonstration of his power but speaking through his servants the prophets. We have Jesus the word made flesh who calls forth life from that which was dead. Jesus still speaks life into our dead hearts. That we hear his word and believe his word and now have new desires, new thoughts, new wishes to do what is pleasing to him. But also do we recognize, too, that it is only by God's grace, which is sufficient, that we do such things. Because not even the forgiveness of all your sins is impossible with God. You see, what Christ did on the cross for you for the entire world covers more than your sins. No sin is unforgiven by God for those who believe. Because your forgiveness is not dependent on you. Just as your salvation is not dependent on you, it's dependent on Christ. And he's done it all already. And what good news this continues to be. Because with man, salvation is impossible, but not with God, for with, all, with God, all things are possible. And yes, we do continue to struggle leaving behind the things that so persuade us the things that so potentially control us. And yet we continue to seek to do God's will. And he gives us strength to do this, not of ourselves, but of him. How much is this life compared to to the one for all eternity. And yet God has us here in this life to live for him, to serve one another. But what great words our Lord Jesus also gives to Peter and the disciples too. Even when Peter in his audacity says, look Lord, we've left everything and followed you. It almost sounds like Peter saying, hey, look what I've done. And Jesus does have a word of admonition for him when he says, many who are first will be last, and the last first. But just prior to that, he says, 
There is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the gospel who will not receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. So often we look only at the here and now. In other words, what we can produce, what we can get, what we can get, receive. And yet, with the Lord's help, and Him opening our eyes, we study all the more abundantly the great gifts that God has given us, and the gifts that God will give us from time to come, according to His promise. Because that same word that called into being light, the same word with which God created the heavens and the earth and placed everything in them, the same word that Jesus speaks life to Lazarus and those who had died, even to us does he speak, raising us from the deadness of our sins to live by faith in him. And so also by God's word does he convince us through Jesus Christ that those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. And who is the good thing? None other than Jesus Christ. And thus in him you really do have all that you need. Everything else is like icing on the cake because the substance, the contentment which God gives us, if it's not found in Christ, it's found somewhere else and will never be satisfactory or sufficient. But in Christ, having faith in Him, Yes.